In my last video I covered the Diamondback Explorer. Well, I thought the next logical step up in my exploration build series would be the Asp Explorer, the former king of medium exploration, which was only displaced by the arrival of the Crate Phantom, a ship which I'll cover in an upcoming video. I thought the Asp Explorer would be a good place to start because in terms of cost it's the next logical jump up from the Diamondback, but the Diamondback is more than capable of earning you the credits necessary to skip this and go straight to the crate. Though, I still meet explorers from time to time who like this ship and use it. Despite it coming in just behind the Crate Phantom in terms of jump range capability, it's still a very capable ship and nobody's going to laugh you off the stage if you choose to use it. It's got about as much nostalgia in Elite Dangerous as something like a Jeep Wrangler has in real life. It's just a super utilitarian craft. The Asp Explorer follows the same standard pattern for core internals as all exploration ships do. Lightweight alloy, heavy duty with deep plating. Low emissions power plant, monstered. I've selected a 4A, but you've got flexibility in here depending on how you lay out your optionals. Unlike other ships, other smaller ships I should say, the Asp Explorer leaves you enough room that you can play with the optionals and there's multiple legitimate paths to success. So if you don't quite like my layout, you can definitely break away and do your own, and you'll find people within the community who will recommend different priorities in terms of layouts. Uh, but for my purposes, this, this reflects my gameplay style and the way I like to explore. If you find that your way differs, then make changes however you want. I'm just here to give you a starting point from which you can play. So, uh, 4A power plant, like I was saying, low emissions. I've chosen to monster this since the scoop time is actually pretty slow, or pretty, sorry, since the scoop time is actually pretty low. But if your scoop time is more than 45 seconds or a minute, I usually recommend people go and hit the thermal spread because it gets your efficiency up just a little bit more. For D thrusters, dirty grade five drag drives. This gets your normal space exploration speed up reasonably high, 467 boost, 343 cruise. 4D life support, lightweight grade five. 3D power distributor, engine focused with super conduits. This lets you get your boost time up higher while still leaving you enough power to play with the pulse laser. 5D sensors, lightweight. Fuel tank is 32 tons from the factory. I don't touch this value because fuel capacity is very helpful on any ship. The 5A frame shift drive is manually modified with the tech broker stats. So like, this is another situation again where if you can get the tech broker frame shift drive you should do it because it gives the Asp Explorer the same benefit it gives everything else that takes a 5A frameshift drive. It is phenomenal, and 68 light years is nothing to scoff at unladen in jump range. It's super nice. Optional internals. 6A fuel scoop. We run into an interesting situation here because the 6A fuel scoop is actually several times more expensive than the base hull. So if you do happen to be running on a budget, you can take the base cost from 53 million for everything down to 31 million by just going to a B-rated fuel scoop, and that gives you a 42 second sc uh, scoop time. Still manageable with the 4A power plant as configured. 5H Guardian Frameshift Drive Booster. Uh, definitely a must have for any exploration ship that can fit a size 5. 3A AFM. 3E Cargo Rack. 3D Shield Generator, Enhanced Low Power with Low Draw. The shields are paper thin on this, which is just enough to avoid ground impacts or excessive damage from flying a little bit crappily, but if you smack into the ground at high speeds with this shield setup, you're probably going to take all damage, which you should endeavor to avoid because one of the compromises that I make in this build is it does not have a repair limpet controller. Instead, it has the shield generator. You could put a repair limpet controller in here, but you would need to sacrifice either the research limpet controller or the... AFM. And that's kind of... That's, that's your call on that. A 2G planetary vehicle hanger, since it draws more power but weighs less. A detailed surface scanner, engineered with the only blueprint offered. 2F pulse laser, lightweight grade 5 and flow control. And then lightweighted heatsink launcher and point defense. One for managing high G worlds in the event you decide to pay them a visit. And for mitigating overheats around stars and then the other four guardian ruins in the event you decide to pay them a visit, as is the pulse laser. Not a complicated build overall, and actually the Asp Explorer is very maneuverable. 
with one of the best viewpoints in the game for cockpits. So if you're a VR commander, you'll probably get more out of this ship than you will the Crate Phantom in terms of looking at the surroundings. And that might matter more as the Odyssey drop happens. And at the time I'm recording on a Sunday, uh, the Odyssey drop is tomorrow. So, I don't know. If you're a VR commander, your Odyssey experience with the new graphics and terrain is probably going to mean more in an Asp Explorer, but the Crate Phantom has got an advantage in terms of atmospherics because its cockpit is just so cool. But you do get less outside to look at. Anyway, that's the Asp Explorer in a nutshell. I will catch you guys later.